Hey everybody, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread and I'm getting ready to download a new pantograph pattern and I'm using QCT5 Pro on my Grace Kinney 21X Elite. I wanted to show you how to download patterns directly to your tablet attached to the machine versus having to download it to a laptop or a desktop and save it to a USB and then bring the USB over and run it in simulation mode. You don't need to do all of that. Uh, you can just download it directly from the internet. But there's a, a little bit of a file folder structure that I want to explain that can help out a whole lot. The first thing you need to do is to open up the software and you don't necessarily have to have a quilt on. I'm going to hit pantograph and it's going to want me to go through the motions of setting the safe area. And I'm way down at the end of the frame, but I'm just going to move it over here and touch top left. And I'm going to move it down over here closer to me and touch to, uh, bottom right. When you get to this screen, you want to go to plugins. And when you touch plugins at this screen, you get a plugins menu that says batch import. And that's what you're looking for in order to be able to bring in your design. Okay, so that's where you would be in the software, regardless of whether you're downloading from the internet directly to your tablet or you're going to reach out and go find it from a USB in simulation mode. Now you'll notice I have not entered simulation mode. We are like ready to go on a real quilt here. Okay, down here at the bottom of the screen, there is a yellow folder and that is for the Windows file folder structure. Uh, structure. I want to e explain something here. So this is my downloads folder. Now I've got a whole bunch of files that I have downloaded in here. And over here on this side, there is a home and a, a Becky, and then there's my desktop downloads documents. This is called the quick access menu. And if you cannot see this, you would come up here to the top and there is a tab that says view. And when you click on that, you get a menu and you want to go all the way down to show and make sure that navigation pane is checked. So if I turned it off, now you cannot see that navigation pane. You need the navigation pane, it's gonna be very, very helpful. So I'm gonna go back to view, I'm gonna to go to show, and I'm gonna check navigation pane, and here it is. I'm gonna zoom in on this right here. So we have this PC, and we have local disk C and network. And I'm gonna to touch on local disk C. This is a Windows Surface Pro 7 Plus. That, that's the tablet that I have. But all Windows computers, desktops, laptops, and these tablets will have this. You want to go to this PC and Local Disk C. And remember Local Disk C. We're going to see that in the QCT5 software. Okay, when we get to Local Disk C, there are a bunch of folders right here, all right? We've got Intel, Performance Logs, Powered by QuiltCAD, Program Files, there's x86 Program Files. Here's Users. See, this is Users. Now, when you first established a Windows account, you had to give your, yourself, you had to create a user folder, or the computer created a user folder for you, and you had to give it a name and you had to tell it what user you were. So I told my computer I was Grammy and it, it brought it down to Gram and that's what it calls me. And then it has a public folder. There's a couple of other folders in there that you can't see because I don't have the settings set to tell me to show hidden folders. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So Gram is my folder and when I click on it, in here comes my contacts, my documents, there's my downloads. Whenever I download anything from the internet, it's gonna go right here into my downloads folders. If my husband had a profile on this tablet, then his downloads would go into his user file and his download folder. It's all about having different user accounts on a computer. All right, so, Kind of keep that in mind and look, 
This right up here, this is called a breadcrumb trail, all right? Think of Hansel and Gretel. So we are in this PC, local disk, users, Grammy, and then down, uh, downloads is where I download my designs from the internet. Okay. I am here at Urban Elements. I love to get my pantographs from here. I just purchased this Wishbone and I am in the My Downloadable Products on their website. And I want to get this Wishbone. I'm going to use it on the Plaid Pines quilt. So I'm going to touch it. And when I touch it, it's going to begin to do a download. When it downloads, this is a zip file and it says open file or you've got a folder and you have a trash can. This is what's called a zip file. I've downloaded it twice. If you just hit open file, uh, let me do that. It opens up and it looks like you can use these things, but you cannot. They are compressed and they are unusable in this format. Think of like the space bags where you shove a blanket in the space bag and you zip it up and then you suck it down with a vacuum cleaner and everything compresses super, super tight. And you can't use the blanket in that form. You need to unzip the bag, let air back in there, and then the blanket will poof back up into its usable form. That is the same idea with zip files. What they do is, let me go back to my downloads folder. What they do is they compress all of the files into a nice and tidy, small, teeny tiny, big files into a little packet that can travel over the internet quickly. But they need to be extracted and let them all return to their original form in order to be used. So a lot of people get hung up on, well, I downloaded the file and it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work if it hasn't been extracted. All right. Or unzipped, Windows calls it extract. All right, so there's two different ways that you can extract this. Windows is famous for giving you multiple options. They have put a menu item right up here that says extract all. You make sure that your item is highlighted, your zip file is highlighted. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go to view and I'm gonna touch extra large icons. See the zippers? That's how you know that's a zipper file. It's a zipped file. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna, it is highlighted and it's blue now. You can either hit extract all or you can hold your finger on it and you will get a menu and it has extract all right here. So you've got a couple of different ways. So I'm gonna tap it. I'm gonna touch extract all and it says select a destination and extract files. Now you will go through this process, whether you are on this tablet or your desktop and you transfer it with the USB. So this part right here has to be done no matter what. What this process saves you is having to search for a USB, put it on there and then bring it over and do it in simulation mode. All right, so where do you wanna put this? That's what it wants to know. So look here at this breadcrumb trail. I am in Users, Gram, Downloads, and Wishbone 1. I'm just gonna hit Extract, and I'm gonna let it extract right there. Now it is extracted, and if you look up at the top, it doesn't say Extract All anymore. That's how you know it's already been extracted. So now we have downloaded the file, and we have extracted it into a usable format. I'm just gonna minimize this, and minimize this, and minimize that and we are back in the QCT5 software. Here's the magic button, the batch import, that's going to be able to bring the file in and then put it into a visible format that it looks like an icon so I can see what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna to touch batch import and remember we got that from the plugins menu. Now see right here, I've got a couple that say at the beach and pumpkins and loops and they just say file, I shoved them in there and I didn't use the batch import and that is why I cannot see the picture of, it just says QLI and there's another extension after that if it has been brought in properly. I'm gonna touch multi and I'm going to select all and um, I'm just gonna touch delete. Do I wanna delete these files? Yes. Up here, here is the breadcrumb trail 
that we were talking about. So in this one right here, we're in C powered by QuiltCAD. Remember we saw that in the program files area? So in order to get this, I'm going to go to new drive up here at the top. Where do you want to go? Okay, well, we're going to start at the very most top level folder and work our way down. We're going to go to local disk and you get a whole bunch of stuff in here. There's users right there on the local disk. I want to touch that. And here are some hidden folders I told you that I couldn't see. There's that public, but there's Graham. That's the one I want. And now I'm looking for my downloads. There it is. And right there, there's Wishbone 1. And I need the QLI. There it is right there. I'm going to touch it. And see, it, it still looks like file. It has to go through the batch import process in order for the thumbnail to show. So I am just going to touch import. And you'll get a text document that pops up. It says wishbone.qli batch import process complete. And it'll say now your imported patterns are in the patterns batch folder. Be sure to optimize them in pattern CAD. I'm going to tell it okay. Do I want to import more? No, not at this time. So now we're back to the screen where we would need to select a pattern. So I'm going to select a pattern. And don't forget, it told us where they were. So we're going to go to patterns and batch. That's where it is. And there is my wishbone with my little icon. I'm going to tell it open. Okay, there it is. And now I can go through and set the pattern height and do all of the measurements and everything that I need to do to make it work. So now let me go back to home. I'm going to open up Panograph again. And now let's go to select pattern. And what I want to do, I'm in batch. I'm going to touch this and I'm going to go copy and I'm going to patterns. And I like to put mine in imports. So I remember where they all are and I'm going to tell it right here, paste. And it has added it right there. So now I can go back to patterns, go back to batch clean that up and I'm going to hit delete. Um, it'll be permanently removed from the batch folder. That's okay. I could have used cut. So let me go back to patterns. Let me go to imports and it is still there. See right there. So you want to go in and clean those up so that you don't have a whole bunch sitting around and then you don't remember whether you imported them or not, but I'm going to hit cancel. So, oh, open. Yeah, there it is again. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel a whole lot. I hope you got something out of this. It's really very simple. Once you understand the Windows file folder structure system and how to be able to get into that quick access menu and then make sure you can get to your information in your user's folder and get what you need. I'll talk to you later. You guys go sew something. Bye.